All right, guys, I'm going to go through these four examples on this note sheet to help you out with substitution in case the Khan Academy um, videos didn't really help. So I have these five steps um, we're going to run through for the substitution method. Um, our first step is going to be to pick an equation that's easiest to get one of the variables by itself and solve for a variable. I can choose either of these equations, and I can choose either x or y. My suggestion, what's going to be the easiest, or at least the least steps always, is going to be to, if there's a variable that has a coefficient of 1 or doesn't have a number on it, that's going to be the least amount of inverse operations uh, to turn your equation around, to transform it. So what it means to solve for a variable, you're either making this so that it's x equals or y equals. So if I were to turn this around so that it was y equals, I would have to divide by this 2 that's there because I don't want 2y, I want y. I'm going to use this first equation and solve for y because the y doesn't have a number on it that I'm going to have to divide by. But again, you can do whichever way you want. So with that all said, let's get started. So I changed the first equation around so that I'm going to go with y equals. Since this is negative x, I'm going to add x to both sides. So this equation is going to become y equals x plus 4, or 4 plus x, either one works. Now I've taken care of step one. I picked an equation and I solved it so that it was either x equals or y equals. Now I'm going to substitute into the other equation. So since y is equal to x plus 4, I'm going to take that and I'm going to plug that in where y is. I'm going to substitute in for y. So I'm still going to have negative 8x because I'm not going to do anything with that x. Um, plus 2 and then in parentheses because the 2 has to be multiplied by y when it's a coefficient and since we have more than one term here plugging in, I have to use parentheses. So I have x plus 4 equals 2. So step two, done. I substituted into the other equation. And now step three, solve for the first variable. In this case, I'm going to be solving for x. But if I had made this one x equals and I plugged in for x, I'd be left with my y's and I'd be solving for y. I'll show you that one um, on the next, on number two. I'll show you what that will look like. But with this equation, now step three, I'm going to solve for the first variable x. So I have to distribute in. So I get negative 8x, I didn't do anything with that, plus 2x, plus 2 times 4 is 8, and it equals 2. And now to continue solving, I'm going to combine my like terms. Negative 8x plus 2x is negative 6x. I have to subtract the 8 to bring that over. So I get negative 6x equals negative 6. Sorry, you can't see that. They divide by negative 6. So I get x equals 1. So I solved for the first variable. Step 3 is done. Now step 4, substitute and solve for the second variable. It doesn't actually matter which one you plug that into, but since we used the second equation in to get the first variable, I always say use the other one to get the other variable in case you made a mistake somewhere. So this equation was y equals x plus 4. And so I have 1 here that I'm going to substitute in for x. So 1 plus 4 equals 5. So my solution, just like when we did graphing, it's going to be an ordered pair. My solution is going to be 1 comma 5. And then last step, check your solution. You can always, when you get an ordered pair, you can always know if you're correct or not. Um, you don't need to be asking me if you're right. You don't need to be um, looking for, waiting for the answer key. You can always plug your answers in and check to make sure you're right. So we have to plug these numbers into both equations because remember our solution has to work in both equations. So my first equation, I had negative x plus y equals 4. When I plug these numbers in, I get negative 1, because I plugged 1 in for x. 5 is y. So negative 1 plus 5 is positive 4. 
Did we get 4 equals 4? Did we get a number that equals the same number? Yes, so it works in the first equation. Second equation, I'm going to plug these numbers in. Uh, 1 in for x, 5 in for y, and again, see if it works out, because remember our solution has to work in both equations. So negative 8 times 1 is negative 8, 2 times, whoops, 2 times 5 is 10. I add those together, 2 equals 2, yes, we know our answer is correct. All right, second problem. So like I said, I'm going to do this the other way. So in example 1, I substituted in for y. This time I'm going to substitute in for x just so you can see how it would work either way. Um, so in this equation, in this example, we already have two equations actually that equal, that are set up equal to our variables, so you actually don't have to change either of them. So that first step of pick an equation and solve for a variable, we are actually already done with that one because we already have at least one that does that. So I'm going to take this y plus 3 and I'm going to substitute it in for x. So again where my x is, I'm going to take that away and I'm going to substitute in what it equals inside my parentheses and copy the rest down. Now I'm going to go ahead and solve. Now I'm down to only one variable, y, and so I'm going to solve that. So I get y equals 2y plus 6 minus 4. Um, I can combine my like terms. So we get plus 2. And now since my constant is over here, I want to move my variable over here. So since this is positive 2y, we're just doing inverse operations and solving equations for the variable. It's just variables on both sides back from unit 1. y minus 2y is going to be negative y equals positive 2. I'm going to go kind of below this, sorry. So that's just so you can see it better. Negative y equals 2. And then I'm dividing by negative 1 because we don't want negative y, we need positive y. Nope, sorry. That, oh boy. y equals negative 2. Sorry, guys. All right, so now that we solved for one variable, we have to plug it in and solve for the other one. So I'm going to take this answer and plug it in here to solve for x. So instead of y, I'm going to plug in negative 2. And negative 2 plus 3 x is equal to 1. Ordered pairs, x always comes first. So you have 1 comma negative 2. And now if you're like me and you make little mistakes like that, that's this is why it's a good idea to check your answer. If you check your answer and it doesn't work in both equations, then you know that you can go back and try and find your mistake. Because if it only works in one or if it doesn't work in either, then you know that you got it wrong. So let's double check this. All right, so our first equation, y equals 2x minus 4 y I'm plugging in negative 2, this is my checking, um, equals 2 times 1 minus 4, 2 times 1 is 2, 2 minus 4, negative 2 equals negative 2. Yes, it works in the first equation. Second equation, x equals negative, sorry, second equation, x equals y plus 3, we're plugging in, oh my goodness, this is what happens when I try to make videos at the end of the work day, negative 2 plus 3, 1 equals 1, yes it works. All right, so number 1 and 2, you have a one solution problem, you do your algebra out and you get an ordered pair. Now remember with systems we have two special cases as well. So if I look at number three, again I already have an equation that's set up equal to one of our variables, so I don't need to transform anything. I can just take this and plug it in for y. So I have 6x minus 2. I'm substituting y was equal to 3x plus 2, so I took away the y and I substituted in 3x plus 2 equals negative 4. Now I'm going to distribute, so I get negative 6x minus 4 
Now I combine my like terms, 6x minus 6x, those actually cancel out. So our final step in our work leaves us with negative 4 equals negative 4. This is going to be one of these special cases. When your variables cancel each other out and you're left with a number that does equal the other number on the right hand side. This is going to be infinite solutions. So just like when you were graphing and you ended up with two lines on top of each other, it was infinite solutions because they meet everywhere along the line. They meet in an infinite amount of places. When your variables cancel out and you end up with a number equals the same number, it's infinite. So our last scenario, so number four, again, I have one equal to y, so I don't have to turn that around. I'm just going to plug this in. I get 4x minus 2 times 2x plus 6. So I took that because that's equal to y, I can replace y with that. I distribute in 4x minus 4x minus 12 equals 8. Again, those cancel out. 4x minus 4x equals 0x, so those go away. I end up now with two numbers that do not equal each other. That's your no solution case. There's nothing that I could plug in for x here to ever make negative 12 equal to 8. In the infinite solution case, it doesn't matter what I plug in for x. Negative 4 is always going to be equal to negative 4. The x's will cancel each other out. Negative 4 will always be negative 4, so that's infinite. X's cancel out or y's cancel out if you're doing that one. Um, and negative 12 equals 8. Negative 12 is never going to equal 8, so it's no solution. Now, with these ones that you're supposed to do on your own, um, the only thing that I want to tell you is that um, if your ordered pairs are not x and y, they still go alphabetical. So your ordered pair here for your answer should be m comma n, and here it should be c comma d. When we did this in uh, class with my in-school learners, also um, a lot of people were trying to change this one around the second equation for d equals, and that will absolutely work. You will end up with some fractions and decimals, but it will work. Um, again, my tip for a little bit easier is if there's a variable that has a coefficient of 1 to make it so it's equal to like C here. Um, but again, you can choose whichever equation and whatever variable. All right, let me know if you guys need any help.